In today's show, we've got news about new mask guidelines, possible changes coming to Disney World's Tower of Terror, Disney Broadway is getting ready to reopen, headline news, meetups, trivia, and so much more, all in today's Disney Parks Podcast. Welcome to the Disney Parks Podcast with your hosts, Tony Castlenova from DisneyByTheNumbers.com and Park Hopper John from WDWParkHoppers.com. Keep your hands, arms, feet, and legs inside the podcast at all times and get ready for the Disney Parks Podcast. Welcome, everybody. How y'all doing? Good to see you. Welcome to the show. Tony, how you doing tonight? Good. Welcome to Fun Day Monday. It's Fun Day Monday. The funny thing about doing the podcast is a little bit of behind the scenes. We do four or five shows a night on Mondays. Four or five we, shows this night. This night. Tonight. <laughs> we usually do we do three. We do three Patreon shows. Then we do this show. So that's four. And uh, a, a, a lot almost all the time we do uh, another show for another podcast that we do. Mm -hmm. Um, Sometimes we run out of time and we have to figure something else out. All that being said, every show, Hey, welcome to the show. Uncle Tony, how are you doing tonight? (laughs) I I feel, I feel guilty asking him four (laughs) times. I was doing, but I'm getting better. It's almost over. (laughs) It's rolling on down. I should start out like fair, good, better. (laughs) Yeah. All right. It's done. (laughs) <laughs> oh my show god show five i'm done <laughs> show five he's done put so, a fork but, in me call me done right <laughs> we're so glad that you guys are here uh before we get too far down the rabbit trail i want to make sure that we give a shout out to our good buddies destinations to travel look the world is about to open back up and one of the best things that you could do now to kind of help your mental state and to uh, give yourself something to look forward to is start planning a vacation. Uh, get the heck out of Dodge. Leave your house for more than a minute. And uh, the best way to do that is to contact our friends at Destinations to Travel. They are the best in the business. And it doesn't matter what type of, of trip you want to go on, a family vacation or a romantic getaway, uh, even, dare I say, cruises soon, knock on wood. Uh destinations of travel will be your guide for your dream vacation. And the brilliant thing about these folks is it does not cost you a dime. So what we would encourage you to do is go to disneyparkspodcast.com forward slash travel. And that'll bring you to a, a short little survey to give them a little idea of what you're thinking about. And someone, when you hit enter someone from destinations of travel, will get back to you as soon as possible and start planning guys. It's so much better to have amazing professionals on your side. And if it doesn't cost you a dime, why wouldn't you? Because if you run into any trouble and you don't have them in your corner, you're dealing with all that junk on your own. So guys, have the best of the best in your corner. Get in touch with our buddies over at Destinations Travel today. Yeah. Interestingly, I flew to Pittsburgh uh, this past week. So Mm. Sorry um, to hear that. Yeah. Orlando to pittsburgh uh what was that that was a wednesday morning so it wasn't crowded because it was the first flight of the day mm-hmm. uh and it was the lovely people at spirit and if you like spirit airlines god bless you <laughs> good for you <laughs> happy to know that somebody does <laughs> <laughs> it's because, a necessary in your world. yeah it's nothing more than a bucket seat it, it horrible experience. Anyway, coming back Pittsburgh to Orlando, there was like nobody. It was a, a late night flight. You know, Spirit only does two flights from here to there, one in the morning yeah. and then one in the evening. And that's it. If you right. don't make either one of those, you're screwed until the next day. Mm-hmm. Anyway, Pittsburgh airport, there was like nobody there. It was like crickets. Nice. <laughs> nice. <laughs> you can run through the airport like OJ. Yeah. <laughs> Don't say it. No Don't comment. say it. I know. No comment. Think. Don't say it. Uh, Orlando Airport. You would think things were everything back to normal. It had to be the most crowded terminal. I was like, did I go through a wormhole? Is the pandemic at, over? At midnight? No, it was uh, seven p.m. It was. Oh. Cr- I mean, I had to weave through people. 
from the mm-hmm. gate to bag check, there were mm-hmm. so many people in the airport. I was like, what the hell happened? <laughs> I was like, this is crazy. So, uh, yeah, I mean, get a travel agent, really. Yeah. Because I didn't want to be my own travel agent, <laughs> you know. So. Yeah, understood. Yeah. Understood. And. Yeah. And still, wear, you're going to have to wear a mask on the plane, bring sanitizer and wipes because uh, everything is crowded at, in, in Orlando. Yeah. And yeah. I, I, I even still see pictures every day people post. It's like hours to get a rental car or to get on transportation at uh, the, the airport, you know, Mears or whatever well, shuttle service you're trying to get on. It's ridiculous. It's, it's like the Disney mobile app. Order early. Yeah. Or often. Yeah. And I will tell you, I rented a car in Pittsburgh, and the rental car companies don't have the same inventory they used to. So if you don't have a a rental, you may not get a car. Um, It's that dire. Did you do the uh, pre thing where all you had to do was like walk in and show your ID, and then like they walk you out to your car? No, it's like I go out to my car. I'm a Hertz. plus premium plus or whatever they're calling it these days i just go out my name's on the board i go pick a car i get in it and drive out and that's it i'm done nice yeah uh i didn't even have to show my driver's license this time. see you yeah. nice i'm like yeah all right goodbye if you don't want to see uh, it i'm not going to give it to you so i'm assuming that you didn't do anything for the weekend uh that was disney oriented other than just probably no, no. watching disney stuff with your grandbaby yeah that's pretty much it I nice. should, uh, before we get into the news, let's talk about this. Hey, oh, wait, right, let me back it up a little bit. Uh, angle it down a hair. So, there we go. Wait, wait. There we go. Try to get the lights out. There you go. And uh, there's the back. Oops. It's backwards, but okay, cool. That's no, backwards. Here. I don't know if you can see. Look, the houses are cones, cozy cones, and then the hotels are Al's Toy Barn. And here's the pieces you can play with right here. Like mm. We may have to have a Monopoly night, John. Maybe we should make this a meetup. Oh, my God. <laughs> Come play Monopoly with the Disney Parks podcast. We'll go to one of the lounges or something and play Monopoly. That'd be fun. We should <laughs> I'm sure the servers game. would love us playing a game of We'll play we'll play Monopoly until, like, 11, and then we'll play, like, Cards Against Disney. <laughs> <laughs> really ruin and sully our Disney podcast reputation. I see. Mike is asking what the boardwalk is. Yeah, wow. you know, I was a uh, light foot house. I don't know what that means. All right. I'll have to I'll have to open it up and play. Yeah. Anyway, no, I'll let you know. Play. I actually may open this one compared to the, to the villains one that I have upstairs. And Anna, if you're listening, thank you. I still haven't opened it. That's (laughs) nice. It's still Uh, sealed. (laughs) So I didn't do a ton Disney this weekend, but I did go to Ravello on Friday (laughs) to to celebrate my uh, 15th anniversary. Nice. Thought there'd be applause, but okay. Oh. Um, or yeah, should we give you the wah, 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 wah. No, no. Yeah, applause is good. But uh, Fabrizio was there. Uh, Ricardo was there. The whole team was there. Man, I'm going to tell you, those people know how to treat their guests well. Yep. I mean, everybody. I think probably part of it was once we got seated at our table, mm. you know, a message went out and they said, you know, table 67's 50th anniversary, go say hello. And it's like, hey, happy anniversary. You know, everybody was coming over. So it was yeah. great. Saw a bunch of people that we hadn't seen in a while. We had a when we did our meetup there not that long ago. The lady that served my wife and I remembered us, and she's like, "You guys were here for that meetup. Yeah, you guys, that's right over there. I'm like, oh my god, how do you remember that?" So I mean, I know everybody argues that Disney is like the pinnacle of guest service and all that stuff. Kids, I respectfully say that four seasons is starting to get a little bit of a leg up. Um, yeah. Independent of the, you know, pandemic, yeah. they're still killing it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So that's what I, I did. Yeah. I don't know if I told you my crazy story. I was in DC once staying at a high, I checked in, literally checked in. I went to the elevator, 
somebody came out of the the elevator, you know, with a name badge and said, "Oh, hi, Mister Castleover, how are you?" I'm like, <laughs> "What? What?" <laughs> I, I was like, "I'm just going to my room because now this is scaring me." <laughs> so they're like, "Yeah, they, you know, have everything on you, you know, your all your information. They they post it, I guess, in the back for, you know, all the back house people to see who's staying." That's terrifying. Yeah, Gee. that's what I said. Okay. That's scary. Yeah, very, All right. very scary, oh. Mr. Webb. Is, uh, is there anything else you want to chat about? No. no. Then there's nothing we can do but get into the news. And now, Disney Parks Podcast News. So, Disney may be gearing up for a transformation of the Tower of Terror. Hmm. Uh, so that could be interesting. Uh, Tower of Terror is a popular ride, obviously, uh, located at Hollywood Studios. And uh, it takes guests into the fifth dimension after hopping on board a maintenance service elevator uh, to make for a very thrilling appearance. And now it looks as though the ride could possibly be receiving some updates as Disney filed a permit. For this location, Walt Disney World filed a permit for Tower of Terror at Hollywood Studios, and though the permit does not give many details, we know that's for general construction at the location of Tower. Uh, this could just be some generalized maintenance that Disney wants to ensure that the building is in tip shop shape and appeals to guests, or Another reason could be that it was filed to modify safety protocols within the attraction. And we already know that Disney World is going to be reducing social distancing within the theme park and phased approach. So it could possibly be that they're thinking of modifying protocols within the ride. But that's not been confirmed. Now, another possibility is that the 50th anniversary of Walt Disney World is coming up. And it's already been confirmed that Tower of Terror will transform into something just to commemorate this milestone. Uh, we did find out that uh, Disney did share that guests can look forward to, and I'm quote, and I'm quoting here, special new touches coming to life on the Hollywood Tower of Terror at Disney's Hollywood Studios, end quote. Therefore, the permit could be filed so that Disney can get ready to transform the tower into something very special for the 50th anniversary. So, this is pure speculation, and Disney's not confirmed exactly what the permit's for. So as soon as we know, we'll let you know. But man, that makes for some interesting rumor thoughts. Okay, it's not even it, it's not rumor because you got to remember uh, the castle, Spaceship Earth, Tower of Terror, and the Tree of Life. Those are the four icons for the fiftieth. So remember, they've already started the stuff on the lighting package for Spaceship Earth. Right. And Tower of Terror is going to get some enhancement for mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. that's the icon for the 50th. So right. it's going to get some kind of lighting update or, you know, some kind of jazzed up, you know, projection or whatever, something yeah. uh, for its icon ish status of the 50th. So yeah. um, that's what that is. It's not it's a rumor, but it's going to happen. They're doing something to it. Yeah. Yeah, I don't I, think I, anything will change on the inside. It's all going to be on the outside. No, I I don't think so either. I think they're yeah. probably going to stay really, really close to the tower that we all know and love. Yes. More put up with yeah. in my case. Uh, but I, you know, I don't think they're taking away the Hollywood Studios or any yeah. of that stuff. All that stuff is very well protected. It's yes. not going anywhere. Yeah, yeah. New lighting package or projection show is what I would say. Going to get yeah. or both. Everybody yeah, deserves a new package now and then. <laughs> All right, uh, Disneyland is to begin testing of a virtual queue. Now, why do you have to test this? Why? It works at Rise. It works at the other Rise. What kind of test do you have to perform? I don't understand. Anyway, uh, starting on May 11th was the beginning of the test. Disney will begin testing the virtual queue system for Indiana Jones Adventure on Tuesday, hoping to help ease congestion in Adventureland. This is kind of a bottleneck between Jungle Cruise, the Dole Whip stand, all kind of converge in this one area. And I can see where there would be a little concern with having a queue line. I right. get it. Uh, the attraction can usually accommodate hundreds of people in an elaborately themed indoor queue. 
which I think is like a quarter of a mile long. It's one of the longest queues at Disneyland. Uh, well, anyway, the walkways and adventure will also get a little congested. So due to California's COVID guidelines for theme parks, indoor queues cannot be used. Hmm. <laughs> that oh, makes things problematic at Disneyland. Yeah, and Indy does not really have room for an outdoor queue. No. Yeah. Or a physically distant queue outside. Uh, the result has been some pinch points in Adventureland, an area that Disney already heavily modified to improve the traffic flow uh, before uh, Galaxy's Edge opened up. Remember, they were doing all that Stardust, oh, yeah. Project Stardust, making everything bigger, wider, better, faster. That's what she uh, said. <laughs> so adapting the virtual queue system for uh, used in the Star Wars Rise, uh, Disneyland will allow park visitors to join the virtual queue for Indiana Jones Adventure and claim a place on the boarding group. This is just a temporary test and will function a bit differently than the Rise of the Resistance version. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for starters, the virtual queue may be deployed at any time during the day. Why isn't it just deployed all day long? Why wouldn't you do it all day? Yeah. That makes no sense. Yeah. Uh, and will not necessarily be offered every day, all day. Okay. That makes even less sense. <laughs> Disney says they noticed an opportunity to alleviate the potential for pinch points in the area in the front of certain uh, long times during the day and will deploy the system as appropriate. So I'm assuming that based on capacity, Right, if they're getting really close to their fifteen percent or whatever they're running, they'll probably deploy, you know, this method. Mm -hmm. uh, and if it's not, maybe they'll just, you know, use something else uh, to do. Right, you know, cue cue them up in some other space outside behind the attraction. Uh, this means there is no uh, set time to try to get a boarding group as there is a rise. Park visitors should check the Disneyland smartphone app uh, when they want to ride Indiana Jones to see if there is a virtual queue in use. If so, they can join the virtual queue right from their phones. If not, they can join the regular standby line uh, at the attraction, wherever that may be, since it has to be outside. Uh, right. Visitors are allowed to enter a boarding group for both Indiana Jones Adventure and Star Wars on the same day, subject to availability. However, wow. unlike the Rise of the Resistance virtual queue, visitors must have used their theme park ticket to enter Disneyland before joining the virtual queue. So you have to ticky ticky the at the turnstile before you can do it. Uh, in both cases, riders can only join the virtual queue for each attraction once per day. There you go. Well, I, I, at some point, why do they not care about the guest experience? Because they I, can't. Right. Right now. Yeah, I get it. But <laughs> but the whole thing about like we're going to do it. Sometimes, but not all the time. And we're not going to tell you when it can do it. It's not going to be guaranteed. So, you know, mm -hmm. it could be this, it could be that. Like, that's just insanity. Yeah. Just to pick a time. We're, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. We're just going to do it this way. Um, but good yeah. Lord, have mercy. I just I just think that that, I feel like they're jerking the fans around a little bit. Yeah. That's yeah. my personal thoughts. <laughs> Anywho. Speaking of I, I think they're just lucky and happy that they're open. <laughs> and yeah. they really don't care. Yeah. If there's a guest, yeah. they're guest experience, they're yeah. not. Yeah. yeah, they're they're like drunk teenagers. They're yeah. just so happy that yeah. they're there. They don't yeah. Anyway, speaking of Disneyland, they've opened a secret entrance to the haunted mansion, but again, only for a limited time. And Disney, in their press release, did it. They said, and they quote, "For the first time Amen. ever." <laughs> Just joking you. Uh, Disneyland's opened up a back route route into the Haunted Mansion, allowing theme park fans to grab a behind-the-scenes glimpse at the popular rides never before seen 
interiors. It's not just Disney magic either. This backdoor walkway is exclusively key to allowing the park to operate efficiently while honoring the extensive COVID-19 safety protocols. Typically, riders would enter through the Haunted Mansion's front door, walk into a stretching room, and proceed onto the actual ride attraction. When the Haunted Mansion narrator asks if the stretching room is actually stretching, it's for a good reason. Disneyland Disneyland stretching room doubles as a functioning elevator. Way to ruin the magic, Disney. Uh, making it difficult to efficiently load riders into the fr- famed attraction while adhering to social distancing requirements. Well, this newly revealed back walkway, which bypasses that section entirely, solves the problem and saves riders time. Unless it's something that the riders really want to experience. <clears throat> Just saying. The lucky few who have been offered entry to go through uh, the side door located within the mansion's outdoor graveyard queue. Uh, From there, they'll pass through a hallway with framed facsimiles of the stretching room portraits before quickly popping out a completely nondescript door and swiftly boarding into the ride's doom buggy vehicles. (laughs) You're there. Uh, the limited time only opportunity is a dream for diehard Man- Haunted Mansion fans, as well as local looky loos hoping to get a ghoulish peek at a part of the ride they don't know existed or didn't know. Would be a better way to say that. The entrance is, isn't the only thing that's changed at Haunted Mansion during Disneyland's 412 day closure. It's <sighs> disgusting. Uh, it's a hard number to say, folks. Uh, enhancements to the spooky attraction, including a return of a classic aging portrait, have improved the experience as a whole. But this reveal makes things even safer for guests, which is great, while providing a little glimpse of something unexpected and new, which is cool. That's uh, plenty to look forward to at Disneyland's reopening for California residents at the moment, that is, including a refurbished Snow White attraction and the Avengers Uh, campus exteriors and exciting new character meet and greets. I don't know how that's even possible. Yeah. Don't they mean character? Very far, far away. Yeah. They mean character like waves at you. Hey, John. Are you there? (laughs) That's right. (laughs) Peter Pan is in Neverland. Yeah. (laughs) Peter, can you come down from the top of the building, please? No, I'm good over here. Have a good day. Thank you. Love you. <laughs> All right. Uh, Disney CEO Uncle Bob Chapik, that is, says park capacity to increase. Uh, but when will the changes take effect? We don't know. Uh, as COVID-19 restrictions ease across the country, uh, Disney CEO Bob Chapik says the company's parks are looking to increase capacity and lift the mask mandate <laughs> soon. Chapik said on the company's second quarter earnings call Thursday uh, that the uh, theme parks had already started increasing their capacity, and he thinks you're going to see an immediate increase in the number of folks that will be able to admit to our parks. We've already seen that. We'll talk about that a little bit later. Uh, Mm -hmm. Chapik hinted its park mask mandates could be lifted by the summer saying not having to wear masks would be a big catalyst for growth in attendance and make for an even pleasant experience. You think, mm-hmm. Bob? Yeah. <laughs> you think wearing a mask in the summer heat won't be fun? Well, but it's California. The heat is different. Well, in here, too. Disney World. He's talking yeah. theme parks, both. Yeah, I know. But I'm just saying, the heat... Mm, the heat in California. No, this is all about California. I think, I think uh, the California heat's not as bad. Trust me. Yeah, <laughs> it no, doesn't matter. Dry, it's a dry heat. It's a dry, dry heat. Uh, what does that mean for Disneyland in Orange County, which remains in the orange tier in the state's economic reopening plan? Currently, Disneyland, which reopened just two weeks ago, is required under state guidelines to limit visitors to twenty five percent. Capacity. Oh, that's right. They went from their paint purple to orange. Right. Uh, orange County is eyeing a move to the latest restrictive, the yellow tier. The yellow tier. <laughs> Which would increase capacity. Oh my gosh. 
35 percent good lord have mercy <laughs> crazy for the thing. larger theme parks like disneyland what does it mean for the smaller ones uh, as yeah. for the mask mandate uh, at the amusement park, it remains unclear whether California will adopt the new health guidelines after the federally government uh, <laughs> said fully vaccinated people can quit wearing masks in most cases. Now, remember, those are CDC guidelines. It's just merely guidance. That's right. Uh, the guidance from the CDC following allowing a full vaccinated additional individuals to remove masks and the removal of physical distancing requirements is extremely possible, a uh, positive news. And as soon as it is practical, we will implement updated guidelines across our business. A Disney spokesperson told the Eyewitness News. Countless. Uh, countless <laughs> Co counties across California are waiting for the word <laughs> from the state on potential new guidance uh, following Thursday's announcements from the CDC. The CDC still calls for wearing masks in crowded indoor settings such as buses, planes, hospitals, prisons. Yeah. And <laughs> <laughs> says residents should follow their local rules. So this is where you get mixed up. The CDC is saying one thing. The state is telling you something different. And then businesses are making their own rules as they want as they go along. So hence the, the confusion. Yeah, uh, it's plus, not, we get into all the political crap. Yeah. Uh, it's not clear when and whether California will adopt this new health guideline after the federal government uh, said fully vaccinated people can quit wearing face coverings and social distancing in most situations. The county's case rate has also fallen to 1.7 per 100,000 as of Thursday, continuing a trend that uh, has the uh, county meeting the criteria to graduate to the yellow tier. If the trend continues through Sunday, then the county expects to move up uh, to the yellow tier by May 19th. Uh, I was just looking at some numbers, just out of curiosity, reading some of the CDC stuff. So in Florida, we've our rate has dropped 53%. That's huge. And I, I, I was just looking at New Jersey, obviously, because I have family there still, and their mm -hmm. rates dropped 71%. So mm -hmm. the numbers are going down, folks. So don't get alarmed that the CDC is loosening things up. Uh, according to these, you know, stats, they the rate is going down. You know, that's yeah. Well, you know, Disneyland is going to be an, a very interesting case, no matter what, because of where it is. Right. Um, so yeah, it's it's going to be a challenge. But hey, you know, they're open. Let's just let's just be happy with that. Let's just yeah. be happy with. It. I mean, I understand Disney's going to take the conservative approach. I just hope they don't. Dilly dallying, delayed. You know, like if if the CD says says just throw out the masks, you don't need them. You know that this is oh we're going to hold on to them for a couple months. You know, yeah. uh, if, if you want to see that catalyst of growth, Bob, I think you're going to have to get rid of the mask sooner rather than later. Right. I'm just saying. Right. Uh, one of the things that we get to do every Monday is record special shows just for our Patreon family. And uh, if you'd like to support the show, and if you would like to get access to those shows that we create that you cannot hear anywhere else except for Patreon, then we would encourage you to go over to patreon.com forward slash Disney Parks Podcast. Uh, and you can sign up for whatever level of support that you would like to. We would appreciate uh, if you want to hear the shows, though, you got to come in at least the five dollar a month level now the cool thing is is not only are you getting the shows but you're also getting uh, a very robust reward system so the five dollar level you get this this and this at the ten dollar level you get all those things plus you get this this and this uh and then you get the free shows on top of that uh there is a level that you can get the uh disney by the numbers t-shirts and the shows and all the rewards plus i'm getting there t i'm getting there uh plus uh patreon is allowing people to sign up annually and save 10 more percent and if you sign up today or if you level up today we will get you one of these amazing little hats like tony is showing right now it's a hand, it's an embroidered pixar hat they're uh custom vintage limited time you can't get them anywhere else while supplies last off supplies last oh as seen on tv sooner rather than later 
<laughs> yeah. So if you'd like to get in on that, we would encourage you to do so. It's a great community over there. Go to uh, patreon.com forward slash Disney Parks Podcast. All right. Uh, John, I didn't tell you this, but we're calling in Audible for the May 29th meetup. Okay. Uh, uh, apparently, the private theaters go quicker than I thought. And there are none for that weekend at all. So uh, I thought let's go to the new Splitsville Lounge. Okay. Take a looky loo. Uh, maybe we can get a donut over at the donut place too. Hey yo. So yeah. Or we can get a couple donuts for people. Yeah. So I figured, uh, you know, maybe we'll buy a couple apps for the table. So that'll be mm-hmm. on us, and then we'll uh, get some donuts at the donut place, and that'll be on us. Yeah. So, uh, I'll see if I can schedule a movie <laughs> in a private theater thing somewhere between now and then and we'll we'll figure that out so may 29th 1 p.m splitsville now is the new uh thing uh edward i know you're listening i know you're free i expect to see you there i'm just saying <laughs> <laughs> all right next up if you want uh come and join us uh we are going to have lunch with uh, former Imagineer Brian Collins. It will be June 12th at 1 p.m. at the Boathouse. You will need a ticket, and then uh, lunch will uh, be on you. Mm -hmm. Uh, There are only a few tickets left, so if you are interested in doing this and going to be in town, you need to go to uh, HTTPS uh, colon forward slash forward slash DPP with Brian dot eventbrite dot com. Okay. So okay. go uh sign up and do that. And like I said, there's only a couple of tickets left. So this is really your chance to just sit down and chit chat with an imagineer, uh former imagineer, talk about whatever imagineering armchair things you got bouncing around, you know. Uh bring attraction ideas. I don't know. Maybe it still has connections back there. <laughs> Uh, August 7th, uh, Ravello Breakfast, uh, details coming soon. And December 11th, mark your calendars, is our annual uh, Christmas crawl on the monorail. Uh, hopefully the Poly will have a monorail platform by then. Hopefully. We'll see what happens. All right, last week, Joan, let's whoa, get whoa, to whoa, the... Whoa. Oh. One, one second, I want to interrupt one second. There's a question in the chat room. Let's go oh. ahead. And for the Splitsville meetup, you need yeah. to show up. Just show up. Just show up. If you want to come to see Brian, you got to go to the Eventbrite site. Yeah. Um, but other than that, yeah, just come show up. The Ravello, Ravello breakfast will be a little different as well because we have yeah. to make a reservation. But yeah, just come on and uh, we'd love to have you there. Go yeah. ahead. Yeah. No show. RSVP, just be there. Uh, and we'll probably be there for at least a couple hours, I would imagine. Because uh, once we start, we don't stop. Unless we got someplace to go. That's right. <laughs> well, this is time for dinner. <laughs> we got to go. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, this week's trivia, or last week's trivia question was, which Disney princess had the least number of lines throughout their entire film? And uh, the correct answer was, John. Aurora, Sleeping Beauty. Yeah. She was sleeping. She was sleeping during the whole thing. Oh, night, night. Nappy, nappy. <laughs> Uh, so the winner is, oh gosh, Rob, <laughs> Rob R, uh, it's, it's in the, well, it'll be in the mail. It's sitting here on my desk. <laughs> it's in an envelope. It will be mailed. All right. Let's talk about this week's trivia question. Yep. Uh, this week's trivia question was, or is, <laughs> What was the name of the lovable caterpillar character in the movie A Bug's Life? So, mm-hmm. little caterpillar guy. Uh, mm-hmm. Who did the voice for that? Was it uh, Kind? <coughs> Richard Kind? Who? Richard Kind? Uh, oh, I don't know. God, uh, if it was. Uh, great. Hang on a second. Yeah. I think it was. Uh, 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 uh. Let's see. Chat room? Anybody? <laughs> Who did the voice Joe for the caterpillar? Ramp. Joe Ramped. Oh, Ramped. Joe Ramped. Okay. Yeah, All right, so character. if you know the answer to the trivia question, because uh, I almost said it, 
If you know the answer to this week's trivia question, email that to Disney Parks Podcast at gmail dot com. Richard Kind, what a great actor! Yeah, he's yeah. he's. I love him. He was in Inside Out. He was the elephant guy, Bongo, Bingo, Bongo, or whatever. Uh, really? Yeah, I think so. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know that. Uh, so we've got a question. We spent we're doing a little bit more Disneyland trivia because we've got a, or not, we're doing a little bit more Disneyland stories because we've got a lot of stuff going on. Uh, but Disney fans, all Disneyland fans all across the world were very emotional on April 30th as Disneyland finally reopened. Many guests entered Disneyland Park early and were able to enjoy Disney attractions after waiting over a year. I believe the number was 412 days. Yep. Uh, Disney life is good again. Some Disney rides, including the Matterhorn bobsleds, are still closed. So people are starting to wonder what's going on over at the Matterhorn bobsled. So the latest rumbling surrounding what's going on uh, is that they are uh, having some ongoing issues uh, due to the decay of the interior of the mountain. So Disney fans are suspecting that Imagineers are working on the uh, decaying supports in stages and replacing some tracks. Now, they recently, well, I'll get that second. Uh, due to current building codes, uh, Disney's unable to tear down the and rebuild the mountain, <laughs> of course. So this is an uh, ongoing refurbishment, which is an uh, in indication that the team is working with uh, what they can to get the ride safely reopened. Traction is several decades old, so it makes sense that the refurbishment is going to be ongoing. It will take quite a while. Uh, and uh, Disney is doing some serious repairs. Now, Disney has not officially announced what's going to happen uh, to the Matterhorn bobsled attraction or what the refurbishment entails, uh, but at reopening date, has not been officially revealed. There's been some speculation on social media that the entire ride could possibly be reimagined or excessively improved, similar to Snow White's Enchanted Wish or Big Thunder Mountain Railroad. Uh, for a while, many suspected that the mountain could be rethemed to Frozen. Please, God, no. And although Disney has not announced a retheming or reimagining for the ride, many Disney fans see that as a possibility uh, in the future. <sighs> what? Okay. We can only hope that the integrity of the attraction will be maintained and can be refurbished and preserved, and we'll be able to enjoy the thrilling ride again sometime soon. According to the Disneyland ride refurbishment schedule, Matterhorn Bobsled is listed as under refurbishment through June 28th, although that subject's change. I think they, they recently did a massive overhaul prior to the 65th anniversary. I thought so too. So I'm I'm trying to figure out what the holdup is. Yeah. Unless something bad happened while it wasn't running for a year. Mm. Um I can't I, I I say it and I am going to grimace. I can't imagine them overlaying some IP on top of this attraction. That the the pro okay, so here's the thing. I could see them doing it here. Yeah. It, much easier than I can see it at Disneyland because yeah. my 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 problem with that is you just don't mess with Walt's Park. Yeah. That was Walt's Park, yeah. and that was his attraction. I would, I would imagine that the Disneyland enthusiasts, and I'm using that word loosely in that sentence, <laughs> would revolt, would rip the park apart. Yeah, <laughs> there are certain things there that I, I I don't think can be screwed with. An enhancement to you know Snow White's scary adventure I get uh, mm -hmm. because it was a little bit scary for younger kids, the younger audience. Uh, but I think there it was a scare, a fun kind of scary. But I get it. Uh, I I I can't see them really doing anything. And I think Bob Gurr would have a heart attack. <laughs> wow. <laughs> You know. Bob, Bob's probably so like I yeah, whatever, do whatever. I built what? it, I made it. Now you figure it out. <laughs> yeah, you know. Uh, yeah, so very interesting. Yeah. All right. Uh, Disney on Broadway announced the return uh, dates for two of their musicals. 
uh, Disney Theatrical Productions, Disney's Broadway musical <laughs> division, has announced the reopening of The Lion King, the Hey-o. musical, and Aladdin, the musical, uh, <laughs> this September. Like all Broadway, Disney shows have been shuttered since the pandemic closed the Great White Way back in March of 2020. Disney's theatrical division also revealed all new guest benefits for ticket sales, including no penalty for date changes. Now, you have to understand, all of this stuff goes through Ticketmaster. And for Mm -hmm. them to be picking up the tab on this stuff and getting Ticketmaster to agree to it, huge. Because Ticketmaster don't care, you know. Yeah. So, no penalty for change dates. No penalty for ticket cancellations. And wait, it's going to get better. The Lion King will reopen on September 14th, along with uh, other big Broadway hits such as Wicked. And guess what else? Hamilton. Hamilton. <laughs> Alexander Hamilton. 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 I am <laughs> We are meant to uh, Aladdin, meanwhile, will reopen on September 28th. Uh, unfortunately, the popular... Frozen musical, the third Disney uh, Broadway show, will not come back. For the last time, time in forever. forever. That's awful. Yeah. Uh, September 14th, uh, Return to Broadway, kicked off by Hamilton, The Lion King, and Wicked, uh, announced uh, on, on the Good Morning Show. Uh, this alliance between Broadway's three highest profile hits is intended to send a message that Broadway is back and it's united and it's committed to its ending devastating period of hardship for the tens of thousands who make their li- uh, li- uh, livelihood really directly from Broadway shows and the tens of thousands uh, in the dependent industries and hotel, food, everything is all right. sucked up by that. Scappers. Yeah. Disney, along with these openings, is introducing a new benefit for guests visiting the new Amsterdam and the Minskoff Theater. Disney will be paying all of your fees and services charged by Ticketmaster through April uh, through August seventh of twenty twenty two for oh an God. entire year. They're covering all of the fees. Wow! And the change, and the cancellation, and everything. Oh, wow. If you can't attend a performance, you can exchange it or refund it for free. Wow. All of that free. Uh, <laughs> free. Free to celebrate the return of Disney's by purchasing a ticket for both shows at one special rate as low as $149 total for two Broadway shows. Available Jeez. through July 1st of twenty. 20- 21. Wow. I looked at seats and there are plenty of great seats at that price on the floor. If that's where you want to sit. With each double the magic package purchase, you will receive one ticket to the Lion King and one ticket to Aladdin in the seating section of your choice. If you don't Uh, No, yet, when you want to join us, no problem. You can choose your performance and dates anytime after the purchase and get personalized concierge service to secure your best seats. You'll find, uh, you'll fill out a simple form and when you are ready, (laughs) and Disney will take care of the rest. So you, you literally purchase the tickets and not commit to a date and then get concierge service to pick the date and your seat. That's crazy. They are going all out to make this easy for you people. Really? Well, they got to they gotta bring people back. I mean, Broadway's yeah. Yeah. dying. Yeah. Uh, yeah. No. yeah. Uh, listen, you, you, you'll you have to go to the New York site to find out the New York rules uh, when all this happens. Because uh, they are, you know, one of the harder hit states like California. But uh, you can go to the Minskoff Theater uh, 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 site. Uh, and you can look at the Lion King guide. It'll give you all the information for that. And then the same thing uh, with the New Amsterdam, uh, uh, where Aladdin will be. And you can see that guide. And I will tell you, the New Amsterdam Theater is spectacular, gorgeous theater. Mm-hmm. Disney mm-hmm. didn't gut it, but brought it back to what it used to look like. 
And uh, I saw Mary Poppins there, and it was fabulous, fabulous, fabulous. Right. Anyway, I'm excited. I I want to go. I really do. I'd like to go see both of yeah. you on Broadway. You know, I would I wouldn't mind seeing them either. I uh, I would love to go see Hamilton in Broadway. It'd be yeah. kind of fun. Maybe we can make but, it a three for. Yeah, why not? <laughs> I'm sure Hamilton's not going to run any discounts. No, and it'll probably be hard to get those tickets. <laughs> and it won't be the original cast, which was probably the best cast. Well, well I don't know. I've seen some of the other cast. I don't think the- Lynn's going to come back. Maybe he-, he will for a while. Lynn hasn't been on Broadway for years. Yeah. yeah that's what I'm saying. Like, well, yeah. Okay. There's more dining options coming to Disney's Animal Kingdom, finally. Uh, Disney's Animal Kingdom uh, reopened. A few more dining locations. Uh, Dino Diner and Terra Treats are reopening after being closed since the park shut down. Terra Treats is in Discovery Island. will be reopening from 11 until 3. As you venture through the sights and sounds of Discovery Island, treat your taste buds a savory snack and some suds. Chow down on deep dish pizza and then quench your thirst with a soft drink or beer. Und beer. Uh, Dino Diner opens on June 13th and is located in Dino Land, USA. You can chomp on churros with chocolate sauce or get your claws on some Dino drinks like ice cold sodas and frozen lemonade. All served from a playful old time trailer. Uh, Dino Diner is home to the corn chip pie. Oh, I got sick on that when I was a little kid, so I cannot, I can't, I can't handle it. Handle it. Uh, corn chips, chili, sour cream, green onion, shedded, shred, shed, shed, shedded cheddar, and jalapeno. And also serves hot dogs and chili cheese dogs, along with churros, beer, and drinks. In park dining does require a park reservation and valid admission for the same park on the same day for each person in your party, ages three and up. Uh, you can learn more about the dining options during the phased reopening at Walt Disney World Resort uh, dot com or Disney dot com or Disney World dot com, whatever. Yeah, whatever. Disney dot World dot Disney dot Go dot com com dot gov. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Listen, Disney's hiring for a lot of things, but if you've ever wanted to work on a cruise ship for Star Wars, they're hiring. <clears throat> uh, has anyone ever said they would like to be Kylo or uh, Ray? Well, now's your chance. You're in luck. Disney Live Entertainment is currently accepting online submissions for roles on the Star Wars Galactic Scru- Star Cruiser, uh, the one-of-a-kind, fully immersive Star Wars multi-day adventure coming to Walt Disney World Resort in 2022. I would assume they're going to start selling this soon. You know, I'm on the yeah. list. Are you on the list? Did you sign up? I'm on the list. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when passengers board the Star Cruiser, the Halcyon, uh, for their voyage through the galaxy far, far away, there will be performers who will join them as crew members, guests, and even interlopers as they travel in style to the Outer Rim. We're going to go to the Contemporary, to the bar? Apparently. It's <laughs> weird, right? If that's how far we're going. <laughs> Do I, yeah. <laughs> oh. I could drive myself there. I don't need a starship. I have to do. <laughs> Uh, During the experience, a variety of adventures uh, befall the ship, and onboard characters find themselves caught in an intrigue of uh, galactic conflict. The Disney Live Entertainment uh, listing says the company of actors will portray characters from vast and diverse galaxy and will actively engage with passengers as much and as, uh, as much as with other performers. Every character will leverage uh, uh, be leveraged for improvisational scripted and interactive moments. Disney Live Entertainment is looking for the following dynamic and athletics uh, actors Mm -hmm. to portray uh, Ray and Kylo Ren. Actors with prior experience and knowledge in the stage combat uh, Washu, martial arts or hand-to-hand are encouraged to addition. Mm-hmm. So for Ray, they are looking for a female uh, actress, uh, five foot six to five foot eight, with an athletic, slender build, 
and strong imp- improv- improvisational, if I can speak tonight, abilities to portray Ray. The scavenger from the harsh desert planet of Jakku, who learns the mysterious power of the Force, is shaping her life. They are also looking for a male actor, six foot to six foot two. Same thing, improvisation, improvisational skill abilities uh, to portray uh, Kylo. Uh, they are also looking for some youthful uh, and friendly actor, guitar singer in their 20s. Uh, they're looking for an actor and vocalist in their 30s and 40s with strong improvisational skills, ability to portray the galactic superstar. Who's that? Twi'lek? Twi'lek? Twi'lek. Twi'lek. Um, let's see. They're also looking for a mature commander actor in their 40s or 50s. Hey, who oh, can... I... Yeah. <laughs> who will be portrayed the Halcyon captain. Aye, aye, captain. <laughs> hi there. My name is Halcyon John. What was that? <laughs> what was that uh, the, in Wally, the the captain? <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I could do that too. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're looking for an effervescent actor in their thirties with strong improvisational abilities to portray the Halcyon's cruise director. Uh, they're looking for a friendly and engaging actor in their late uh, teens to twenties with strong improvis- improvisational. Oh my God, how many times can I say that word tonight? Just uh, assume that you're all doing it. Yeah, so. uh, to portray a mechanic. Interesting. A confident and engaging actor in their 40s with uh, strong, you know, skills uh, to portray the fixer, which is a will-traveled devil, may-care human, who uses his charm to his advantage. Uh, Charismatic and engaging actor in their 40s to be the first lieutenant. A warm and engaging athletic actors in their 20s and 30s uh, to serve as saber trainers. Uh, mm. They must uh, the patient and well composed instructors who serve as expert wielders of the lightsaber. As they, uh, so if you board a lightsaber and you're an expert, this is a job for you. Totally. So it's all very interesting. Go to DisneyCareers.com. Uh, I think for some of these, or a good majority of them, you have to send in a videotape of yourself. Uh, yeah. Disney Live Entertainment likes a video of people. So, uh, you know, show off your improv, your saber wielding skills, you know, Mm -hmm. dress up in your best 501 outfit, you know. (laughs) So, yeah. yeah. Um, Next up, we're going to talk about some of the uh, key takeaways from the Disney second quarter earnings call. A little bit to talk about here. Uh, Walt Disney Company reported earnings for its second fiscal quarter, which ended on April 3rd. Uh, We'll... With overall revenue down 2.5 billion to uh, 3.173 billion, it was 5.66 billion last year. So we're down a couple couple million billion and a half. Disney continues to experience the notable impacts of the pandemic. Uh, here are some of the noteworthy takeaways. Um, if you want to see the official release, let us know. You can find it on Disney shareholder website. One of the most interesting pieces of information comes on the heels of the new CDC guidance is fully vaccinated people can resume normal activities without masks or physical distancing. With some exceptions were given, such as public transportation and private businesses. There's the key words there. Um, Bob Chapik made note of this guidance as, quote, big news for Disney. Although he didn't say Disney would remove mask mandates from its theme parks, he mentioned that wearing a mask of Florida heat could be daunting and hinted towards a more pleasant experience in the future. Future. Daunting is not the word I would say. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, Bob. Uh, next, it's also recognized that following CDC guidance and state recommendations, Walt Disney World would, uh, has already started raising its theme park capacity. Uh, next, parks and experiences had an operating loss of $400 million, higher than the original estimated $369 million. This is largely due to Disneyland, Disney Cruise Line, and other closures throughout the quarter. 80% of furloughed cast members have been asked to come back, have returned. Well, what about that other 20% you say? Well, think about it. Disneyland has uh, been able to recall more than 10,000 furloughed cast members and retain them according to California's health and safety requirements. 
Uh, it's also uh, suggested that there is a strong growing demand for guests at Disneyland and Walt Disney World in the current quarter, which is excellent. The end of Disneyland's annual pass program was discussed in reference to the ability to create a new loyalty program that, quote, isn't governed by legacy. Chap excited the need to improve the guest experience while also providing an adequate return to shareholders. That's interesting. Disney has amassed 103.6 million subscribers, excuse me, Disney Plus, 103.6 million subscribers, but still fell short of the projected 110.3 million. Despite this, they're still on track to reach 230 to 260 million subscribers by the end of fiscal year 2024. (laughs) 20th Century Fox's Free Guy and Shang-Chi uh, it should be Marvel, Shang-Chi, and the Legend of the Ten Rings will be released with a 45-day exclusive theatrical release, meaning at the end of the 45 days in the theaters, it comes to Disney+. Plus. So that's exciting. Yeah. Some good stuff came out of that. I'll have to go listen to that this week. I was yeah. like listening to those calls. I like all the stupid questions at the end by the analyst. <laughs> Idiots. <clears throat> anyway. Uh, Sweet Dreams, uh, we got a first look at the first ever Disney Cruise Line Funnel Suite. Uh, yeah. This is a 1,966 square foot penthouse in the sky. Will be their most unique Disney Cruise Line accommodation to date. It is the crown jewel of a truly jaw-dropping array of staterooms and suites aboard the Disney Wish. Every storybook-inspired uh, stateroom on the ship will be a luxurious, peaceful retreat designed with ample room for families, plenty of storage, uh, upscale amenities. So no matter what you choose, you'll be guaranteed to find the perfect home away from home for your family. Mm-hmm. Well, with it being nearly 2,000 square feet of living space, including a spacious upper level loft, I think all the living space is on the first floor, and then the upstairs is just hangout space. Yeah, like, why not? gorgeous. Yeah. yeah. Uh, the Wish Tower suite will sleep up to eight guests with two main bedrooms, a children's room, a library that converts to a bedroom, and a four and a half bathrooms. You get a bathroom. You get a bathroom. You get a bathroom. Everybody gets a bathroom. I'm thinking we should do this. We could find uh, eight people. We wouldn't even necessarily need eight people. We just need to pay for the room. Yeah, that's true. Uh, The magnificent living room will be flanked by uh, an open dining area, a large pantry, and a bar. What the hell do I need a pantry for? There's food all over the place. Uh, all offering extraordinary views across the upper decks to the horizon through an expansive two-story window wall. Woohoo! I wonder how many times a day that gets cleaned. Uh, <laughs> what's more, the uh, this enchanting new suite will feature artwork and materials inspired by Walt Disney Animation Studios' Moana. Terrific. Moana. Moana. Make way. Make way. Uh, throughout the suite of creative ornaments and custom artwork will be uh, will offer sophisticated nods to the characters and locales of this beloved film. The piece of the resistance will be a handcrafted porcelain sculpture that comes alive in only a Disney can do way. <laughs> that is very interesting. So you're walking around in your underwear and it's like, hmm, nice underwear choice, John. <laughs> That's wrong, Disney. Uh, when guests arrive home to the Wish Tower Suite, they may discover that the statue uh, pulsing in a myriad of views of. <laughs> don't do it. I don't. don't do it. I don't want to see anything pulsing. In <laughs> 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 a myriad of view of green. <laughs> amid soft chimes that recall the film's distinctive <laughs> soundtrack, uh, revealing itself as the heart of the T50. Uh, the heart special. Of the what? 
to Feedy. Okay. Uh, the special lighting and audio effects will eventually fill the room to provide a truly magical one of a kind greeting. Of course, guests can expect the royal treatment will stay. Uh, you better be. While staying at the Wish Tower Suite, marked by the expert service of personal concierge team, a delightful selection of curated services and daily treatments, and even a private elevator. Oh, my. Dude, we couldn't afford that if we spent a lot. That's time. what I'm saying. We may need more than just us. <laughs> we, we may have to spread the pain people. a little bit. <laughs> That's right. Let's start our GoFundMe right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's GoFundMe. That sounds. That sounds truly amazing. Yeah, yeah. That yeah. that actually might get me on a cruise ship. Although the Walt Suite, um, what is it? The Fantasy sounds also very yeah. intriguing. Yeah, yeah. All right, uh, Disneyland Paris is going to be reopening on June seventeenth. So does that bring it like it's the last one to open? I think so. Shanghai's open. Hong Tokyo's Kong's open. open. Yeah, Tokyo's I think this is the last one. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Disney's just announced that Disneyland Paris will be reopening June seventeenth. The resort, which has been closed and reopened multiple times since last summer as a result of COVID, um, excuse me, government mandates, will enact a limited attendance policy amidst a suite of health and safety measures. Uh, Disneyland ushers in new and returning magic with today's announcement, or with the announcement. It's reopening as of June 17th with Disneyland Park, Walt Disney, Walt Disney Studios Park, and Disney's Newport Bay Club Hotel and Disney Village with booking flexibility. Uh, at Walt Disney Studios, guests can step into the storied world of Disney and Pixar's cars in the all-new Cars Road Trip. Uh, guests take the wheel on a Cars-themed road trip along Route 66, discovering local natural wonders like the world's largest lug nut and Cars Tastrophe Canyon. Uh, with popular characters such as Lightning McQueen and Mater coming along for the ride. Uh, starting June 21st, guests can stay at the heroically appointed Disney Hotel New York, The Art of Marvel. The four-star hotel, styled as a New York art gallery, will pay tribute to the birthplace of so many Marvel superheroes and their artists while offering premium comfort and personalized services. Epic stays at Disney's Hotel New York, The Art of Marvel, are bookable starting... Uh, May 18th, and to make this day even more super, guest booking before July 29th, 2021, with an arrival date of Mar before March 30th of 2022, will receive a take-home uh, exclusive Marvel print by artist Matt Ferguson in complimentary mocktail of their choice in one of the hotel bars. You nice. get a mocktail. You get a mocktail. Uh, those looking for a post play stay can book all at the following Disneyland Paris hotels, which will open their doors progressively. Disney's Newport Bay club on June 17th, Disney's hotel, New York art of Marvel on June 21st, Disney's hotel Cheyenne on July 1st and Disney's Davy Crockett ranch on July 13th. Uh, subject to be continued evolution with the pandemic situation. Before booking a reservation, guests are encouraged to visit DisneylandParis.com for more information. Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. All right. Uh, go visit us at uh, uh, get some merch over at Public. You can go to DisneyParksPodcast.com forward slash T-E-E public. And that's where all our merch is. Get it while it's still there before they take the rest of it down. That's right. <laughs> hey, kids, how about a little headline news? And now, the headline news. All right. Uh, Walt Disney Imagineering filed their permits for the installation of the 50th anniversary shield on the Cinderella Castle. Hmm. You have to ask yourself, really? You have to file a permit with your own government yeah. to just yeah. put up that thing? It's a decoration. Why do you have to put that up? Yeah. You don't file a permit to put up Christmas lights every year, do you? Or do they? Or do they? <sighs> anyway. Uh, Splash Mountain increases capacity, now seating parties closer together. So mm -hmm. let the humanity begin. 
uh, Cali River Rapids begins uh, their delayed opening uh, due to the season over at Animal Kingdom. Normally, they start opening, but they've had some uh, delays. Yeah. A uh, gradual reduction of the six-foot uh, physical distancing requirements continues at the uh, Magic Kingdom. I think they're starting to reduce it in some place. I think some have uh, some places have taken the sign down six feet. Wow. Uh, now I don't know if that's going to be replaced with a three-foot sign, or they're just going to, you know, just wing it. Uh, mask-free relaxation stations uh, remain in place at Disney World. Well, yeah, because we still have to wear a mask at every attraction we go on. It's like a mask safe space. Yeah, exactly. Uh, there is lots of park pass availability at Disney World, so uh, I think that's hinted. You know, when Bob said they're uh, increasing the capacity, I think this was uh, part of that because uh, it seems like uh, the next couple months are pretty – wide open so if you're looking to go to the park i'd get in before the summer comes because it's Sweet. gonna get hot and uh it's gonna get difficult uh disney's paradise pier hotel will open on june 15th so if you're looking to go to disneyland you'll have another option besides uh grand california all right monorail orange came from its refurbishment with a completely updated interior and these black exterior deltas. Uh, so there's a little, uh, like the monorail has a black ribbon, right? That runs mm -hmm. from end to end. Well, mm -hmm. by the big windows, they put like these little black deltas, they're calling them. Um, and the, you know, behind the bench seat, yeah. it had that, you know, Walt Disney World green kind of. Well, now mm -hmm. it's orange. Orange. And it has Walt Disney World thing. So nice. now you know what color monorail you're on because of the bright orange color on the inside. And they'll be like, I'm on monorail pink. Uh, you're on a monorail. Well, that's, all right. So that's interesting. So on the inside cabin, there is that pink ribbon, but that's in all of the monorails. Because one time I'm like, what, what monorail am I on? I looked up and like, oh, I'm in pink. And I got out and I'm like, oh, I was on black. <laughs> So <laughs> they really should that uh, that one pink ribbon that goes around the interior should really be also the color of the monorail you're on. I, I would think so. That yeah. makes perfect sense that, to me. Exactly. Exactly. Uh, Disneyland's uh, Jungle Cruise construction started. I think they're doing the same thing we are. They're not the shutdown thing. They're doing the you know pieces of it without shutting it down. Mm-hmm. Uh, the Frozen sing-along uh, in the studios and the Lion King show over at, um, what's that park? The yeah, Animal okay. Kingdom uh, <laughs> <laughs> are reducing their physical distancing and raising capacity. So we'll see what happens there. Have you seen, John, hmm. video of the Harmonious Show Programming tests? No, I have not. I've oh, heard about it, but I have oh not my. gotten to look it up. So you know like those little half pieces? Well, mm -hmm. they actually stand up. Oh. They can spin around, and they all have jets on them that they can then move independently of the bar. Wow. That's what I said. <laughs> so that, That's great. The test I saw, I mean, there was water everywhere. So my first thought was, well, if the wind's blowing in the wrong direction, you're going to get wet. Because these things are shooting water very high into the air. And um, it's just, you know, from, from white, you know, shooting out to just mist. And I'm like, oh, yeah, people are going to get wet. Okay. They're going to have to put up like, hey, this is a wet zone. And this is a wet zone. <laughs> you know. <laughs> you get some water. And okay. you get some water. You get some Seven Seas Lagoon scum. Mm. <laughs> some dysentery. Mm. <laughs> and a tetanus shot. <laughs> Cannot wait. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, go see if you can find some video. Uh, mm. it, it's quite interesting. Um the where the water is coming out of. I'm like, that's a lot of water. <laughs> and to think that it's going to happen during the day, 
you know, like the fountains are going to go all day long, uh, you know, prior to the show. So it'll be interesting, you know, how they try not to keep people soaked, you know. <laughs> yeah. So, should be fun. Yeah. Tons of fun. Have Poncho, will travel. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, we just want to say thank you so much for listening. Uh, if you're not doing anything, uh, everybody's giving me crap in the in the uh, chat room because I yawn. Sorry. I mean, I just, dude, I got a problem in my head. I yawn a lot. Yeah. Uh, I really do, actually. That's something in my head. But I do. It's late. It's been a long day. <laughs> oh, sorry, what uh no seriously uh we do appreciate you guys being here if you would like to join us and hang out with our amazing friends here in the chat room maybe meet some new disney friends come join us live every monday at 8 p.m at facebook.com forward slash disney parks podcast you can also find out all of our show archives and blog posts and uh the the like over at disneyparkspodcast.com and over there you'll find links to our amazing friends like uh our good buddies at destinations to travel if you're looking to book a a vacation uh the best thing to do is to go to disneyparkspodcast.com forward slash travel and uh, leave a, a little a survey and one of the destinations of travel planners will get in touch with you and start planning your amazing vacation. And again, it's free. It doesn't cost you a dime. And then finally, if you like to support the show, you'd like to help us do what we do, join the other patrons, your other friends who are uh, part of our amazing Patreon community uh, over at patreon.com forward slash Disney Parks Podcast. Anything else you'd like to add, my friend? Yeah, if you get a chance, uh, please rate us and review us wherever you get the show from. You know, iTunes, yes. Spotify, iHeartRadio, I don't care where it is. But yeah. uh, rate us and review us, that does help, um, you know, percolate us up to the top of the list. Absolutely. Yeah. Guys, we thank you so much for uh, all that you guys do for us. So we appreciate each and every one of you. And if we don't see you online, we'll see you in the parks. The Disney Parks Podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company. All Disney Parks, attractions, lands, shows, event names, etc. are registered trademarks of the Walt Disney Company. Disney Parks.